Good afternoon, boys and girls. Uh, we are recording during the day. Um, last time uh, we did this, it was in the evening, and I really prefer these day recordings. We just have abundant daylight here. Uh, it makes me feel more chipper. And um, today I'm going to do something that I never did, but always wanted to do before I took that summer break that I took, and that was a product review. But first, I'm going to give you an, a Hurricane Irma update, and only because it kind of segues nicely into what my product review is all about. Now, the latest, okay, um, the news has been covering uh, this sinkhole that's been forming in nearby Apopka. I live close to Apopka. I'm like in the north end of Orlando. And in Apopka, um, a home got swallowed up into a sinkhole, or at least a portion of the house. And um, the people had to, people that lived there had to be evacuated. It was no longer safe to live there. So now um, they're telling us that we're all going to get swallowed up to sinkholes and die. I mean, that's pretty much the message. Um, they started going into how uh, Apopka is more prone to these sinkholes than Orlando, and I don't remember the reasons, um, the depth before, uh, you know, Lime Rock is reached or something like that. It's really not my point. But um, I had also said something last week about uh, SNAP and the fake news that was being circulated in social media, um, there is something that I saw for myself, so I have reason to believe that is true. And I only saw it at Walmart, but if I saw it at Walmart, it probably applies to Publix, One dixie um, And that is that hot food now can be purchased using an EBT card through the end of the month. And, um, here in uh, Central Florida, Duke Energy has already restored uh, power to all um, residents. So I don't know why I do it until September 30th, but I do see why they would want to allow people to be able to purchase hot food. Usually it's just cold food, even prepared cold foods um, are, um, can be purchased using an EBT card. But um, now they're covering hot food as well. I think that's because people lost power and couldn't cook anything. So uh, that gives people more options. So um, before any of you head out to the store, um, I would verify uh, that those are things you can still purchase. So anyway, um, one thing that has also um, been impacted by um, Hurricane Irma is gas prices, and that's what uh, this rent is all about. Um, they have gone up like 50 or 60 cents, so I'm not really ranting about it. I've been through this before, we've all been through this before. Gas prices fluctuate, and sometimes they go up, up, up for a very long time before they start coming down. And uh, I don't remember how long ago, but there was a time where people were plotting to get even, and one of the ideas that um, that the people came up with was to not go to the gas stations on one day of the week. Just do not go. Um, and I always thought, okay, so all the gas stations will have a really bad day, okay? But how is that really going to solve the problem? Because you still need the gas, so if they have a real slow day on Monday because nobody fills up on Monday, then everybody that needed to go Monday, they postponed it to Tuesday along with everybody else who had planned on going on Tuesday will pile into the gas station so they'll have like a really good day to make up for the really bad day. I never thought that was a good idea. What I always thought was a good idea is just go to the gas stations that advertise the lowest prices. Give, give them your business. And a lot of people can't be bothered because a few people think, well, why am I going to be like looking around to save a penny or two? Because that's all it amounts to. But, you know, sometimes you can save like 10, 15 cents a gallon. And when you're filling up, um, you know, and you're, you're, you're uh, getting, you know, 10 to 15 gallons of gas, that could really add up at the end of the month to, you know, uh, maybe 
five, ten dollars, and over the year, that's a pretty good savings, you know, and uh, and it helps. Uh, I think that's the best way to contain cost. Now, there is an app called Gas Buddy. I've been using it for many, many years. Before it was even an app, I used it online. Um, I used to use MiamiGasPrices.com. This is when I lived in South Florida, and then when I moved up to Central Florida, I started using OrlandoGasPrices.com. I don't even know if those sites still exist, but Gas Buddy is around. I'm assuming it's on the net. I use it on my on my uh, on my phone. And what you do is you load it up and let, let's go ahead and take a look at it, okay? Alright. So um, I heard on the news it added some new functionality to this and uh, something that I've never used, so I didn't even believe it was true, but I went ahead and I ran the app again and um, discovered it to be true. So it might have been something new they added or something that I just didn't know about. So I'm gonna to talk to you about it. All right, so the nice thing about this is you could just go ahead and hit find gas near you. Okay, that's an ad, let's disregard that. Find gas near you and you don't even have to enter your address. You know, it just knows where you are and it tells you where the near gas station. You can also list your favorites, the gas stations that you ordinarily go to, you can save them as favorites. But here it is, it's telling me that within a mile is the quick stop, and that's 263. It's only a mile away. There's a smart sort, okay, which gives you a combination of the lowest prices in your immediate area. Now, you can change that, um, and you can just go by price, the lowest gas stations, um, not necessarily in your immediate area, but, you know, in perhaps your city. Okay, and so you see by sorting it that way, we already got a lower price before we were at 263 at the quick stop. This zip go is 259, and it's still relatively close. It still tells you the distance, 1.2 miles. Um, and this goes up until five, about five miles away. It doesn't get too crazy. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this is that you may be heading, uh, you may live northwest and you're heading southeast, and this will tell you where the nearest gas station is, but it could be further northwest of you when you're heading southeast. So you may end up going out of the way. And um, I, I don't know what it uses. I'm assuming it uses Google Maps, but that's a problem I also have on, with Google Maps because you may want to, you may be in a route somewhere and you want to make a few stops and you want to make those stops on your route and it'll take you out of the way. And maybe there is a way around that. Um, maybe I'm just not very computer savvy, and I just don't know how to use Google Maps or Gas Buddy. And if that is the case, please let me know. Uh, but that is one thing that I have noticed about this. Now, what I did want to tell you about is, if you look down here below, um, we're on fine gas, but um, let's take a look and see what this is, wallet, okay? Um, and this is what I didn't know about. Maybe it was there all along, but I heard about this on the news this week. Pay with Gas Buddy. Okay, so save 15%, 15, well, 15 cents on your first, on each gallon your first fill up, and then five cents each time thereafter. So not only can you find the cheapest gas stations, but you could also um, reduce that price of the cheapest gas stations. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I have checked this out. I haven't joined it yet. And there is um, some confusion about whether Gas Buddy mails you a card to use or whether you use your own debit card. Now, what I don't like is that, and that's why I'm kind of on the fence whether I, whether I want to use that uh, little wallet option. What I don't like is that you're forced to use your debit card. Now, a lot of us um, have perks and the credit cards that we use and we get cash back and we want to build up our purchases so we can in turn build up our cash back on those cards. So when you use a debit card, the only reason why they're giving you any savings is because the gas stations, the merchant has to pay merchant fees to the credit card companies. Usually it's about 5%. So they may be selling um, the gas uh, for $2 a gallon, let's say, for example. But the, um, and 
and you're, you're paying the $2, but they're being charged um, 5% so for, for, um, for every purchase you make. So by the credit card company. So when you use your debit card, when, because it's not a credit card company, there isn't that merchant fee. So the, what the, the, the merchant is doing is you're just passing the savings on to you. They're really not reducing the price of gas. So um, what would be really nice is if you could still use your credit card and still save a few pennies of gambling. So um, overall, I, I still think that Gas Buddy is a great tool. Um, it could be improved if you, if there was a way to find, um, you know, gas on your route instead of rerouting to get the cheapest gas. Um, and maybe there is a way to do that. And if you know what that is, I'm all ears. Please let me know. I'd be interested. And uh, this other feature that I didn't know about. Um, Called wallet it is um, I think has promise, but it would work. I think would be really good if you could use um, you know credit cards instead of your debit card. And I'm not even sure that you use your your own debit card or if you get uh, a card from Gas Bump or Gas Buddy that's linked to your uh, bank account. Okay, so. Um, a couple of other things you can do with the app is whenever you're at a gas station, okay, let's go back to gas, all right. Um, if you select this SIPCO, all right, uh, you can, if you find that the gas price is not $2.59, you can report the price, enter what the correct price is, and um, you'll accumulate points. Now, I've accumulated a lot of points over the years. I don't know what they're good for. Um, it doesn't translate into money, as far as I know. But, you know, that could be fun. Uh, this app does not work while you're driving. Um, if you are driving along trying to use it, that's not safe. And it will ask, it will remind you that it, it's not functional while you're driving. It will then ask you if you're a passenger. So if you are driving and you want to use it while you're driving, then just say that your passengers, obviously you shouldn't do that. It's risky. Um, but I know some of you will want to do that. And there's some other options here. I guess you can select by brand. Um, I don't use any of those things. But um, go ahead and download that app and um, you know start saving money on gaps. You know? um, things are... Uh, you know, expensive these days. You know, I've never been someone that has been very effective at, you know, making piles of dough. But what I've often been good at is finding ways to save money, which has given me more disposable income to do other things. So if you are like me and you're not earning a lot of money, um, then you need to find ways to um, cut down on your expenses, not cut things out of your life. You need to get gas, obviously, but if you can get it cheaper, you should. So just be aware of these things. All right, so um, uh, thanks for hearing me out. I, I, I hope this app interests you. Take a look at it and let me know what you think. Um, all right, next time we get together, um, hopefully we'll have um, um, some feedback from you all. And I uh, look forward to knowing what that is. All right, thank you.